Hello, everyone. Welcome to the platform update for September 2021 for Drone Harmony. My name is David. I'm the product at Drone Harmony. And in this short video, I'll show you what's new in the Drone Harmony web interface in September 2021. So the main highlights that we will touch upon today include uh, a brand new terrain uh, aware planning workflow. Uh, we've made uh, terrain planning much easier, especially for uh, organizations and individuals that use more than one terrain file. And also those who want to use uh, custom data that is um, special for their country. Um, I will talk about uh, this workflow first, and then I'll talk about uh, many um, major UI UX improvements that we've added to the uh, Drone Harmony platform, to the web application. So let's uh, jump straight into it. So uh, the first thing I want to touch upon is terrain aware uh, flight planning in Drone Harmony. So um, those who are familiar with the uh, old terrain aware flight planning, uh, workflow, it included loading a terrain file into the Drone Harmony interface and then planning flights based on the terrain data that would appear as an overlay on the map, uh, the perimeter of that overlay would appear in the map. So we've changed this workflow to accommodate both very large terrain uh, data and also um, uh, use cases in which uh, users have more than one terrain data that they want to use either at different sites or even at the same site. So now all the loaded terrains, and I'll distinguish between two types in a second, but basically all loaded terrains are available essentially as a layer within the Drone Harmony web interface. We don't no longer need to load them into the site. They're essentially always loaded for us and ready to use. So the way that we access this terrain tab that shows us all the terrain data that we have in store in the cloud is through this um, tab over here on the right. So this is this tab close and let me zoom in uh, on my loaded sites. So you will see that on the right, we now have uh, the sites management tab. And the next one underneath it is the terrains tab. And when I toggle this terrains tab, I see two things. So first off, I'll see a list or actually two lists underneath here. One, which we call drone harmony terrains. Those are terrain files that drone harmony supplies to their, to its professional users of usually full countries. So you see here uh, terrains of Italy, Switzerland, Australia, and so on and so forth. And this list continues growing. So those data sets are data that we um, um, find in the, um, in the respective websites of the providers of this data and make it available to Drone Harmony professional users. So for example, the Italy data is the data that's provided by the Italian government um, for, um, for uh, commercial use. And we've loaded this data into Drone Harmony. So customers in Italy are now able to use this data within Drone Harmony as if it were a layer, just like the Google Maps is a layer that we can readily use when we log into Drone Harmony. Apart from those terrains, though, we also have all of our custom terrains. And you see, I have a long list here of all the terrains that I've uploaded into this account in the past. And this is these are all the terrains that we've uploaded through the upload option in the menu. So menu, terrain storage, upload terrain. Every time I do this, the corresponding terrain file will appear over here. So those are the lists and they show us all of the terrains that we've ever loaded. We no longer need to go into the menu. We see them all here. And we also see them being color coded and the color coding is telling us what parts of these terrains are we actually seeing? So me being zoomed in into a certain area in Europe, I actually see only part of them. So in particular, I see Italy. I see part of Italy somewhere here, and I see Switzerland because actually we're zoomed in primarily on Switzerland here, as well as those two little terrain files. And you see them as being those orange or yellow rectangles over here. And you see those are much smaller. So if I click on any, any name here, that will zoom in on that terrain file. So if I click on it, Switzerland, you will see that we will zoom all the way out and see all the terrain data set for Switzerland. If I click on Sultek, 
it will zoom into that specific little data set that I uploaded before. So this is very easy for quick navigation. Now, the second thing we are obviously already noticing is that all of the footprints of all of the terrain files that I've ever loaded are presented to me over the interface as we're uh, opening the terrain tab. So in fact, if I'm planning in a given area, I will see the footprints of all of the terrain files that I will ever need to uh, have in that area that I've ever loaded and also the ones that are globally available. So here we're somewhere within Switzerland. So the big blue overlay that we see on top of everything that's Switzerland. And this little piece here is Sultek on which I've clicked before. And let me do that again. And here, here we are zoomed in on it again. So um, what does this buy us? So there are several things that we can now do that's much easier, that are much easier than they were before. So the first thing that I've mentioned is working with huge data sets. And since we have access to, um, to the terrain in this way, we as Drone Harmon can provide our customers, our professional customers, access to very large terrain, terrain data sets. And let me give you an example right here. So if I click on Switzerland again, you will see that I have all of the data of Switzerland here. So that means that if I go anywhere within Switzerland, it doesn't really matter where. So let's zoom in into somewhere. And if I now click here on the terrain view, you see that little cross that appears in the middle of the screen. I will now load the terrain in this area in the Switzerland data set and switch to terrain view. So let's do that quickly. So now you see the terrain data, which we have here. And this is very powerful because our Swiss customers or customers active in Switzerland can use this huge terrain data set, which is very accurate. In fact, you see here two by two meter grid um, um, compiled into 2019 and provided by the Swiss Federal uh, Office of Topography. Now our users in Switzerland can use this terrain, terrain set for their flight planning. And this is a very large data set, but still very easy to use within the Drone Harmony interface as it's streamed to our customers. So what happens if I have more than one terrain data in one place? So that's also easy to see what happens. So let's zoom back out and let's zoom again to that area in Sulzeg. So you see here that we have both a orange or yellow as well as a blue overlay here. So here, when I click on the terrain uh, view switch, I will have the option to either switch to uh, the Sultek area or into the Swiss area. So if I click here, I can choose between the two and I can switch over to Sultek to this yellow area here, and I will get this area loaded for me. So that's the second data. So that's the same, same workflow will happen if I would plan a mission here. The mission planning will ask me what part I actually want to inspect. Now, one last thing I will say about terrain is that we now have those information icons here on the right that tell us some information about this data. For custom data, it will usually just tell us the name and the upload date, whereas for those other data sets that are kind of global, uh, it will also tell us something about the source as well as the resolution. Okay, so let's switch over to the next topic, and that's the UI UX improvements that we've added to the Drone Harmony platform in the last months. So some of the main um, improvements are actually revolving around how we select and edit things. So let's close the terrain view for now. So um, one thing that uh, is now possible that was not possible before is that we can select essentially any object. Any object is selectable. For example, I can select this building in this site, and I can add to it the second building by holding control and selecting it as well. Now I've selected three areas or buildings, and I can, for example, easily delete them. This was not possible before. Uh, so this is a nice UI UX improvement. Let me undo that thing. Um, another easy, um, another tool that makes life easy for us is tools for, for selecting waypoints and groups of waypoints. So 
let me click on this mission here, you will see that I've selected a mission that is kind of a mapping orbits mission. So if I wanted to select a number of waypoints in the past, I would need to select them one by one. But now we have a tool for that that enables us to select a window of waypoints. So let me do that quickly. So here's me selecting these waypoints. And you see that all the fi all five waypoints that were in the rectangle are now selected. And again, I can either edit them by going to the corresponding tab here on the, on the menu, or I can even right click and edit uh, the multiple missions this way. So I can rotate them all together or I can even delete them and so on. So those are additional things. Now we've already seen right-click and right-click is indeed now a possibility for almost any object within a drone harmony scene. When we click with a right-click on anything, we always get the edit options for that element. So in particular, I just right-clicked on a mission. So we see all of the options that we have we can set a new name for it, we can export the plan, split the plan, and so on and so forth. The same will happen if I select a single waypoint. Now I have a single waypoint edit options here, and so on. If I right click on the building, and even if I right click in an empty space, I can do various things. In particular, I can measure distance from or to this area, and I can copy a position to the clipboard, the position to geolocation of this point, and even start a manual mission here. So let's just do that quickly. So this is how easy now it is to start a new manual mission in a given location in space. Um, so those are a few of the easy uh, UI UX changes. Now let's uh, look at something a bit more complex, but very, very useful. So now we're here in the same site, but we'll look at it from 3D. This is industrial site Zurich. And here I have a couple of missions that are kind of whose visibility is kind of turned off. And let me turn one of them back on, for example, this one. So in this kind of vertical missions, it's often very difficult to choose waypoints in 2D view. But we have a 3D view, and the 3D view enables us to choose those waypoints from the 3D view. Here we have again implemented a rectangle selection tool. So if I want to select these waypoints, it's now as easy as selecting these waypoints like that. And now I can, as I was able to do before, I can uh, edit those waypoints by either right-clicking or I have my edit options for the 15 selected waypoints here on uh, in the menu. So these are additional selection options. Now, finally, another very useful selection or option for waypoints in 3D would be the um, range selector. And let me quickly show you how this works. So I will turn off the visibility of that mission again, and let's focus on this mission here. Now, what was, what was impossible in the past and what is possible now is I can select the mission by just clicking on it, left clicking in the sites menu. And now I've selected those, this orbit mission. You see it by the small little green check mark that has appeared. And if I now want to select let's say all of the waypoints within this one orbit over here. So it's very easy to do this now because I can find the first waypoint by just using this scroll bar here underneath. So this would be the first waypoint. And now I can find the last waypoint. That's the last waypoint in the orbit. And I can hold shift and click again. And here is me selecting all of this range of waypoints on that mission. So this is a range of waypoints and I can now edit them as the same way that I did before. So this is just another uh, easy option that we can now use within the 3D view. I can add to it additional waypoints. So for example, if I also wanted uh, all of the waypoints in that other orbit, I could select now on this. I can select click now on this waypoint and I will add all the way up to here. So I didn't click control, so it didn't add, but rather select. But if I held control, I would select both of those orbits at the same time. So this is yet another example. So there's many such uh, changes that we've added in the last couple of months. 
Um, it's very useful to just right click on things and see what edit options are available. We've added an option to concatenate missions, for example, that's extremely useful for when we want to perform several missions in succession. So for example, I can choose this mission, right click on it and, right, and, and select uh, connect to and then select another mission in this inspection site. So for example, the facade mission that I've seen before. And I've now created one long mission that includes both of these orbits and that facade mission. Let's look at it in 3D. That's how it looks like. This is now one big connected mission. So this is yet another example of some nice tools that we've added. So this is it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this update and I'm happy to uh, see you again in the next time.